I want to say a word before I begin today. The mums that we have as a setting in worship today symbolize and represent each of the 11 women and men who entered eternal life since November 1st, 2019. I want to also tell you that <clears throat> during this past year, only Jim Fulis had a memorial service and a reception at First Church. Joan Liebold had a Zoom service. Arlene Reynolds had a small service with live stream. Tony Carroll as well, a small service with live stream. And Will Fernald, Fernald, Fernald will have a live stream service on November 21st at 10 a.m. The other six have had no services, and as a result, for many of us, no closure. Today, we need to remember them. In this pandemic year, which has taken so much from so many for so long, we must remember them. Today, we will take a little bit of time to lift each one up in this service, during this sermon, on All Saints Day. I ask you to be patient, to listen carefully. I ask you to give a few extra minutes of your lives to salute and remember these remarkable men and women who together lived and served God for 947 years, an average of 86 years for each. They were sisters and brothers, mothers and fathers. They were pioneers and innovators. They were kind and generous, loving and compassionate. They were all children of God. They were ours, and we were theirs. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. James Arnold Fulis was 78 years old when he entered eternal life on November 29, 2019. With a master's degree in divinity from Union Theological Seminary in New York, Jim found his true passion in teaching and working with teens. He loved teaching. He dedicated his life to teaching students in the Roxbury section of Boston, in a school which was 100% minority population when he arrived there in 1966. He taught everything from history to English as a second language to reading and finally computer science, continuing to add degrees and be a lifelong learner in the process. Jim also loved S-gauge model trains. He loved singing, especially in church. He loved his church family, where he served as our treasurer and volunteered in the office several times every week, and so much more. First and foremost, Jim Fulis loved Mary Day, and Katie, and Trenton, and Madeline, and Isabella, and all the people whom God brought into his life. Thanks be to God for Jim Fulis. Richard H. Keevan was 88 years old when he entered eternal life on January 4th, 2020, surrounded by his family's love and Jan, his beloved wife of 68 years by his side. Dick worked for Ohio Bell and AT&T for 48 years. He loved to golf. He loved to share stories about growing up in Wellsville, Ohio. He loved to fish in the waters of Lake Erie and was an avid hunter. He loved to sled down 14th Street and ice skate on Chettles Lake. He loved to grow tomatoes and made his famous green tomato relish, which everybody loved. He served as president and the board member of the Salinesville and Southern Local School District and was a member of the JCs and served as a deacon in the Wellsville Christian Church. He loved and lived life fully. Thanks be to God for Dick Keevan. Benjamin F. Wyant. 85, passed away peacefully in his home, the historic Wellesley Chapel in Hilliard, with his husband, John Chandler, by his side. Father of three, Ben was born in China, 
He grew up surrounded by music and beautiful Chinese artifacts collected by his educator missionary parents. Those years in China shaped his career choices and lifetime interest in Chinese antiquities. Ben was recognized as one of the finest piano technicians in America. His understanding of the instrument's artistic requirements brought him praise from performers across the world, many of whom were proud to know him and call him their friend and counselor. He was a gifted pianist and musician. Ben studied in Germany and developed a truly international perspective on piano building and design, which guided him throughout his professional and technical career. He was gentle. He was kind. He was a member of our choir for many years. Ben Wyant brought music to life and changed us through his music. Thanks be to God for Ben Wyant. Dr. Patricia Leichert Pullman was 84 when she entered eternal life on March 19, follow, following along struggle with dementia. Patty grew up in Ann Arbor, and I, I, can't even, I can't even say it, Ann Arbor, and graduated from the University of Michigan in 1957. While at the U of M, she met and stole the heart of an Ohioan, James Irwin Pullman, a law student. They married September 6, 1958, and moved to Columbus, Ohio, where they lived together for 47 years, living joyfully at marriage until Jim's death in 2005. Patty was an active member here at First Church, serving as our moderator, and by the way, with Jim and Patty together, the first moderator couple in the church, a deacon, and then she served in many other capacities, including a representative to the United Church Board for World Ministries. While raising three sons, Patty pursued and received a PhD in counseling psychology from The Ohio State University in 1980. She served in private practice helping families and later transitioned to finish her career as an academic advisor for OSU's undergraduate psychology students. She was a beloved mother and granny, favored aunt, creative quilter, accomplished chef, elegant hostess, and incredibly unselfish. Through their thoughtful and generous estate planning, following Patty's death, Jim and Patty Pullman left the church a remarkable gift of $150,000. Thanks be to God for Patty Pullman. Margaret Peggy Alexander was 88 when she entered eternal life on April 29th after a long battle with Alzheimer's disease. Active here for 25 years, Peggy served as a deacon and was in worship each week until she was no longer able to be with us. She was a lover of all kinds of music and art from across the globe. She loved dogs with a special fondness for Airedales and wire fox terriers. In addition, she enjoyed wine tasting and cooking fine French cuisine and delighted in graciously entertaining her guests who have often commented on how much they appreciated her Southern hospitality. This girl from Tennessee was one who could turn anyone's head with a smile. She was generous in sharing her gifts with many organizations, and it was Peggy's gift that made our parish hall piano possible. She was always pleased when she found out that the children of First Church were singing every week at the 9 a.m. service to the piano she gave, and she was one of the most delightful human beings I ever knew. She was always sweet and kind. Thanks be to God for Peggy Alexander. Carl Edward Miller was 82 when he entered eternal life, having died of COVID-19 on May 6th. Carl was a lifelong learner and educator. He had a passion for music and fine arts and literature. Known by many for his enduring wit, his perpetual curiosity and his ability to embrace humor in the face of all kinds of circumstances in life, 
Beyond everything else, Carl was very positive and optimistic. He had an enduring spirit of optimism. He was also incredibly forgiving. He was incapable of holding a grudge. He treated everyone he met with love and acceptance. Here at First Church, he was a deacon and enjoyed serving others and being with all of us. He was here every Sunday that he could make it. And Lori Maynell remembered to me that Carl greeted everyone every Sunday with a hearty and joyous welcome. He was especially close to Bert Cook. Thanks be to God for Carl Miller. Joan Marguerite Larson Liebold was 90 years old when she entered eternal life with all four of her children by her side. Joan was one who gave herself in love to everyone she met. She touched everyone's life around her with kindness and compassion love of family and friends, setting a firm example of acceptance, openness, and love for all. In the summer of 1950, it was love at first sight, I think for her, but maybe for both, when Keen Liebold walked into the firelight circle at Dunkirk Conference Center. They married in 1951, and they were soulmates and best friends throughout their 64 years of marriage. Joan's selflessness, compassion, and care for others was legendary among her family and friends. She was also well known and appreciated most of the time for being pragmatic and direct. From purchasing newspapers for, from homeless persons on the streets whose names she would come to know, to volunteer work at First Church for Bread and Good Samaritan and in the office, Joan always helped support those in need, and she exemplified a life of giving and living her values to the fullest. Over the course of her life, she provided maternal guidance, comfort, and support to children and families all across the world. Joan thoroughly enjoyed her role of mother and grandmother and great-grandmother, not only to those in her own family, but also as a mother and third grandmother to many in her wider circle. Trained as a teacher, she loved spending time with children in her life, and in turn, they adored her. Thanks be to God for Joan Liebold. Arlene Finch Flocken Reynolds entered eternal life in the peace of her home in Hilliard on July 5th at age 93. Mother of four and caregiver to tens of thousands, Arlene Reynolds was an active member of First Congregational Church for 66 years. In fact, she was studying the book of Acts and a class on healing just days before her death. Arlene did everything here, especially as it related to missions and justice and mercy. Following her first husband Milton's untimely death due to cancer in 1957, Arlene began her career as a teacher and then director of the first interracial nursery school in Columbus, Ohio, right here at First Church, the downtown preschool. After several years as a teacher, she moved to Head Start as a first in the cadre of teachers in that program. And then Arlene became a child development counselor at Children's Hospital Guidance Center. Her faith and participation at First Congregational flourished through the years. With the love and support of husband John Reynolds, married in 1970, her service to the central Ohio community expanded exponentially. She provided leadership for mission work here, but the most notable thing was her presence in founding Bethlehem on Broad Street and then leading it for over 30 years as she celebrated our area's underdeserved friends each Christmas day. She was a founder of Bob's, as they said, she was the heart and soul of Bob's. For many years, she also ran the Good Samaritan program at First Church, and she was our missions commissioner throughout the years. She supported the building of more than 60 Habitat for Humanity homes. She helped refugees from around the world establish their lives in central Ohio, and she supported a variety of social justice initiatives, especially through bread. She never missed a Nehemiah action. 
Although always modest and deferring the success of her work to God, she received recognition for, with a variety of community service awards. The Columbus Metropolitan Area Church Council's Living Faith Award was given to Arlene in the first class way back when. And the Columbus Dispatch Highest Award, now the Jefferson Award, was also given to Arlene. All her life, Arlene enjoyed traveling and camping and taking her family on adventures throughout New England, staying in close touch with her family back there and visiting with many friends throughout the country. My sermon title for her memorial service was Incalculable. Arlene's influence on people was incalculable. Thanks be to God for Arlene Reynolds. Antonio, Antonia M. Tony Carroll, best known to many here at First Church as Reverend Ron Botts' wife of 42 years, died with Ron by her side and her brother by her side at 72 years old on September 13th after a long battle with brain cancer. Tony Carroll was a trailblazer and a pioneer in the aging field and served as a mentor and teacher and friend to many. She tirelessly advocated for the rights of older adults to age in place with dignity. Known for her quick wit and sense of humor, she was also respected for her wisdom and leadership skills. The aging profession lost a crusader when Tony died and her imprint will never be forgotten. She was the first director of the Franklin County Office on Aging and retired in 2017 after 33 rewarding years of leadership. When state funding for a predecessor outreach ended, Tony and a brave band of supporters spearheaded an effort to create a new program funded by property taxes that became senior options. This new program innovatively met in-home services needs throughout part, through partnerships with profit and nonprofit entities and educational institutions and social service agencies. Under her leadership, a levy was successfully passed five times and grew the client base they served to over 8,000. Adult Protective Services was added in 1999 and expanded the agency's reach to those who were most vulnerable in our community. She loved Ron so much. Their love was amazing. And together they had a fantastic life and marriage. Thanks be to God for Tony Carroll. Dr. Will Willard B. Fernald entered eternal life on September 15th at Bickford of Bexley, where he had lived for the last five years of his life. Married to his most beloved best friend, Betty Taylor Fernald, they shared an extraordinary partnership for almost 60 years until her death in 2008. Will died as he lived, gracefully, peacefully, gently, and still thinking of others. Following service to our nation in World War II, Will returned home to become a doctor, and he was a healer in every sense of the word. As a pediatrician in private practice, he served for more than 50 years and touched countless thousands of lives. As a founder of Pediatric Associates and then a member of the staff of Nationwide Children's Hospital for 60 years, he served as clinical director and medical staff president over the years. And then he went on and served at Ohio State University College of Medicine, teaching the art of medicine and healing to generations and generations of doctors. He did so many things in his time, but one that he was most proud of was being a board member of the Central Ohio Diabetes Association and founder and medical director of Camp Hamwi, a camp for children with diabetes. He was president of the Columbus Civil Rights Council and chair of the Fair Housing Committee in Bexley. At First Church, he was a deacon. He was a choir member. He was an active member of our Wednesday Bible study group and an active member of BREAD. Dr. Will treated everyone who crossed his path with dignity, offering wisdom, comfort, and healing help. Spiritual, moral, financial, every kind of support he could. 
Will and Betty opened their house in Bexley to provide sanctuary to more than 80 people who needed a place for restoration after being battered by the world. As one survivor said, Will was the first man that I ever knew I could trust. Will invested himself and his resources in people and matters of the spirit rather than personal gain. Many people are alive today and are living in rich lives because of Will's compassionate heart. Will made great use of every second of his 97 years in service to others. Thanks be to God for Will Fernald. Dr. Lawrence W. Walquist Jr., Larry, was 91 when he entered eternal life on October 5th after a long battle with Alzheimer's disease. Larry was a gifted landscape architect and designer. His career spanned 50 years, first in private practice, where he went across the globe in his landscape design. And then in 1975, he and Sharon, the love of his life, married over 60 years, and their four children came to Columbus, Ohio. He became a professor at The Ohio State University in landscape architecture. In the mid-80s, he founded the Landscape Architecture Master's Program, chairing the program for the first six years. He loved teaching, and the students loved him. In fact, when he retired, some of them hired him to work for them. During his tenure, Larry also instituted an academic exchange program in Argentina and traveled on several occasions with Sharon and many students. He retired in 2004 as a professor emeritus at OSU, and in 2007, he became a fellow of the American Society of Landscape Architects, truly the apex of his career. Larry loved nature, and during his world travels, he took many photos of nurseries and gardens and churches that his family visited. He loved to sketch, and he did beautifully as he would bring these things back to life in his drawings. He swam every day until his Alzheimer's prevented him from finding his way to the pool. A true gentleman, Larry's charisma and charm will live on through his family and everyone's lives he touched. Here at First Church, Larry was in church every Sunday and traveled with the choir on their pilgrimages. He needed to be credited as well for seeing something that no one else saw. He saw, we saw a parking lot next to us that was a used car lot. That's not what Larry Walquist saw. He began drawing a green space there. And for the first time, we were able to envision what it would be like to have a park next to First Church on the west side. Thanks be to God for Larry Walquist. I see all our loved ones stopping by today they're here to check out how we're doing. I see them with hearts of gratitude and love, checking on us to see if we're okay while we're celebrating them. Now with the angels of glory, they are at peace with loved ones in their families and friendship circles who have gone before us. They are now our ancestors. They are now our inspiration to do and to be more thoughtful and kind, to be champions for peace and justice, to be generous and prayerful, to be active in our world, to make this world a better place. They are blessing us today. Today, just as we are blessed by their memories, may the eight blessings that Jesus calls us to through the Beatitudes bless us so that we might be a blessing to others. Let us be poor in spirit and rich in the love of God as we give ourselves over to God in humility and prayer. Let us mourn, not only for our loved ones, but for all who have died in the pandemic of 2020, and pray that comfort come to all their loved ones. Let us be meek, meek like Moses, meek like Jesus, meek like Martin, as we stand with those who, oh, and meek like Ruth, Bader Ginsburg, as we stand with those who, in humility, are granted the inheritance of the earth. Let us feel the pangs of hunger at the persistence of unrighteousness and respond by righteous action on behalf of those who are wounded 
and devastated by this world. Let us be merciful, not only to those who are close at hand, but for all of all ages who hurt by health and finance and safety. Let us be pure in heart so that the lies and the deceits and the anxieties and the troubles of our times bounce off us rather than lodge in our souls and cause us to become hateful and hurtful too. Let us do the work of making for real and holy a peace that passes understanding instead of settling for the comfort of keeping a false peace which allows for injustice to prosper. Jesus said, blessed are you. He was talking to all of us. May this saturate our hearts today. May our hearts and minds be guided to be a blessing for others like those who have gone before us. Thanks be to God for all of you. Amen.